And then, um, yeah, so starting out again, Steve, by the way, I love the picture on the back with you holding a microphone, uh, which is uh, just, and then, you know, I love that you're a, uh, an introvert and all those different things. So we're super excited to hear a little bit about it. So without further ado, and I also want to thank Tom Costello, because Tom's the one, uh, Tom's on pretty regularly. He's the one who introduced me to Steve and made this all possible. So thanks, Mr. Costello. And again, Stephen, uh, Steve's awesome. what's that, Tom? I said, it's my pleasure. Stephen is a good friend and an awesome agent and a fantastic guy. Super excited Great. to have him on. Nice. Okay. So Stephen, you can unmute yourself. Good to have you. Uh, welcome uh, to the call. And uh, tell us just uh, to start off, just how all this got started. You've been in real estate a long time. You're in uh, tell us like your background, getting into real estate, all of that, like a good story to get us all started. So. Sure. Well, you for you, you, if everyone got the email, but you didn't read it, let me just remind everyone. I am absolutely the worst person to be a real estate agent. The worst, but right? I'm not built for real estate. I'm an introvert. I don't do social things. I don't work nights or weekends. I'm not online. And I'm a bit lazy and antisocial. So right there, basically, I had everything going for me when I got in the business in 2005. And since you're all on mute, you can't, can't even hear the chuckles. Hopefully you were chuckling. It's funny, but it's true. And uh, so I got my license. I'm from Southern California and born and raised there. And so I got my license March 15th, 2005. And my third child was born six weeks later. So here I am. I've got three kids under five. I'm wow. in a commission only business and I'm learning very quickly. I am not cut out. <laughs> this, this, this business is not for me. I don't do any of the things that people like to do or that people are good at to be successful in this business. And, uh, but I had three kids to feed. So I had a very important reason that I didn't want to go back to consulting and I didn't want to go back to startups. I didn't want to do any of that stuff. And so someone said to me, I had a mentor and he said, knock on heads, knock on doors, pick one. Now, this is when I'm living in Los Angeles, when I know people and I'm still in, still not knocking on heads. So I figured, well, let me try this knocking on doors thing. And, uh, the, and that's what I did. And I started knocking on doors because I had to feed my family and I didn't want to go do something else like this. This seemed like a good gig. Like I could, my why in real estate was I wanted to be home and raise my family. I was tired of traveling. I was tired of working long days and then being up later at night to do email. I didn't want to do any of that anymore. I didn't want employees. I didn't want investments, you know, capital investments. And I want to manage offices. Like, I didn't want any of that. I just wanted to do me and then go be with my kids. And so that's how I got started in real estate, which I'm sure just like everybody else. That's a similar story, I'm sure. So, um, and then what were you, did you say it? Did I miss it? What were you doing before real estate? Yeah, I mean, I had done, I, you know, like I said, I'm from LA. I went to UCLA. I, uh, growing up, I helped run my dad's company and I was, so I knew accounting. I knew how to run a business and I went into consulting for a second tier firm. Then I went to work for a reinsurance company. And then I went to work for Ernst Young and I worked on the NASDAQ stock market and the American stock exchange. They were my clients. Um, and then in 2000, went and did a medical startup and I was the chief technology officer and we were out raising money from venture capital firms and private equity groups to roll up uh, medical companies. And uh, wow, was definitely so I, I'd done a not bunch of different stuff. And when it, what was funny is what I got was getting out of the corporate business world. I had a couple of friends in the business world who were like, what are you doing in residential, man? You're a business guy. You should be in commercial. And I, I thought- I was, gonna, I was just going to say, your, all your background was numbers. And a lot of people with that kind of number background do tend to lean towards, because in commercial, it's very little emotion as there is in residential and a lot of numbers and, hey, if the numbers work, I'll buy it, you know, that kind of thing. So what I, this was my experience of being in Southern California. Is there anyone from Southern California on the call or is, where's, where's everyone? Yeah. You can put in the chat where you're from, just so I get a sense of where people are at. 
Palmdale, yeah, there's Caitlin's from California. Palmdale. That's, yeah, and then yeah. Uh, I think we have Tennessee. Some other... I was just in Memphis yesterday. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's not East Tennessee. That was West Tennessee. Yeah, Betty. Betty Fernandez is in uh, kind of the Central Coast area, like uh, Camarillo in that area. Right. So that's not too far. That's not too far yet. Yeah. So, uh, you know, what I remember about in L.A. about commercial real estate is it was when it was good. It was really, 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 really good. And when it was bad, it was really, 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 really bad. And doing the startup, you know, we had missed time to market. And there's only so many people you can go to to raise $20 million. At that time, it was a lot of money. And uh, the thing I loved about re residential is if you've ever flown in, you know, the people who are in Southern California or in big cities, uh, if you've ever flown into Los Angeles, you know, you fly over LA, you know, the greater Southern California area, you fly over LA for like 20 minutes before you land. And I remember looking down, I remember I'm looking down and I'm like, wow, you know, I'll never run out of houses to sell. Like there's, it's infinite. Like there's blue sky. There's just, I'll never run out of people. Um, I didn't know I was going to knock on doors, but I just kind of inside me figured that the market was huge. Like, surely if it's up to me, you know, it will be whatever the Dale Carnegie line is or whoever said that line. It's not my line. I, like, I figured that would be, I could make it work somehow, some way. So that's what I was doing before. And that's kind of, and I had, and then the last piece of it is, it's super not relevant, but, you know, maybe some people can relate is, I mean, I'm not. You know, I did go to UCLA, but I'm by far not the smartest guy. I'm not the dumbest guy either. And I had a couple of friends who were in real estate in 2004 or five who were doing well, right? The market was great. And I'm thinking, and no offense to them because they're all awesome, but, you know, self-admittedly, they are not the sharpest tools in the shed and they were making it. And I figured, come on, if they can do it, surely I can do it. I mean, come on, you know, of course. As we all know, when we get in, you, know, you don't have to be smart. In fact, being smart is almost to your detriment, right? And being successful. Yeah, and and that is that's been said a lot of times recently. Where if you would just uh, be a really good um, uh, Tony Robbins calls it a professional model or model yourself after the people that have come before you. You know, uh, I think you even say that in the one of the one of the things in the book you said. Uh, what top producers say is gospel or something. And I know part of that was sarcastic, not just uh, reality, but tell us a little bit about getting started. Then you got into real estate. I mean, you didn't, I don't know. Did you instantly know to knock on a gazillion doors or how did, how did the transition happen uh, and, and started to learn because you seem like a very coachable guy. So I imagine you were sort of looking for support. Tell us a more, dig in a little deeper, if you will. Yeah, for sure. So I tell the story in the book of, about my first door and uh, I was terrible. I mean, I was really bad. I should have just quit on to the first day. Uh, but I was like, I really had no other option, but I wasn't going to go do all the other social stuff. So I figured, come on, this has to work. Think about, you know, door knocking has been around for how long, Rick? Like since the 40s well, i mean yeah my uncles all did it in the in the 60s that's for sure i don't know what happened before that but it's been around a while my my former wife her grant her grandfather sold secondhand linoleum secondhand not first secondhand linoleum door to door in the 50s and i thought surely if those guys could go door to door, I this is not this is nothing new. Like this works, so I just have to figure out how to make it work for me, and I just stuck with it because I had there was nothing else to fall back on. But I wasn't going to quit. I wasn't going to do anything else. So I figured if I just did this, and I learned and got better, that eventually it would work out. And so the you know the first piece to learn is right whatever trust the process, figure out what your process is, and then just trust it. And, you know, the thing about the doors, and we can talk a lot about this or as little, depending on, you know, how deep you want to get, Rick, or anyone on the call. You know, it's, 
the odds of somebody moving the day I knock on their door is unbelievably low, right? It's I love so hearing low. you say that. I love hearing you say that. Go ahead. It's so low. And yet um, it works because if you if if you're committed to knocking on doors because that's how you're going to connect to people or one of the ways you're going to connect to people, really what there is to do is create relationships. And what I found is that I could create relationships at the doors better than I could any other way. But the best part about that was I did it on my own time frame, right? I knocked on doors 11 to two and that was it. That's all I had to do every day. I didn't have to call my sphere. I didn't have to go out to dinner and take people out to coffee. No, I showed up at their door two or three or sometimes four times a year in person and connected with them and talked about their favorite topic themselves. And every now and then they'd ask me questions about the real estate market. And that's how I built my business, right? Just one, one door at a time. But it, it was, you know, look, every year, do I run across someone who's moving in that moment? Of course, of course. Um, and there are ways to increase your access to finding people who need to move right now. But I decided to work a geographic farm. And so I was going to work that farm and just get to know people and then build relationships. Because again, coming from a professional background, I know how to be a consultant. I know how to be an advisor. And so I figured if I just talk to enough people, enough people will trust me as their real estate agent. And then um, the other side benefit. So just curious, how many people are either knocking on doors or thinking and thinking of knocking on doors? You put it in the chat. So a few of you. So, um, The, the whole point of knocking on doors is that it gave me um, predictability in a very unpredictable and chaotic business. And if you're, if you are, I see a couple of people, you know, yeah. started knocking, working a new farm. If you're committed to making that your farm, it makes, it makes it very simple because you don't have you don't have to do anything else if you do that one thing and you do it consistently and you know that was you know the first four years i was in la and then i moved to colorado at the end of 08 and for those of you who remember who are old enough to remember 08 um i know nine uh the market was terrible <laughs> i mean like really really bad and so yeah. in 2009, I'm in a new city. I know nobody. And I still have the three kids to feed. And um, so I built my business all over again, knocking on doors. And so the benefit of knocking on doors, besides making it consistent, you know what you're doing, when you're doing, you don't have to worry about, you know, what am I, where am I going to start? You pick, you pick one end and you go until you're done. But when I got to Colorado. I didn't know, right? This is a business about connecting people and property. I didn't know any people. I knew zero people and I knew nothing about Denver. Nothing. I know the geography. I think Lucky was in her basement, right? We didn't have basements in Southern California. I didn't even know what a basement was. So I had to learn the market. When you're knocking, you become, if you're paying attention, you become one of the smartest agents around, if you're paying attention, because you see stuff that nobody else sees. You're talking to people about why they moved there, why they're still there, what's on their mind. 08, 09, 10, 11. I didn't need to read the newspaper to find out what the what the feeling was and you know how are people feeling. <laughs> I was talking to them every day. You ask people how they're feeling. And um, so you just become so much smarter. And if you're a newer agent, right, one of your, often one of the concerns is, well, but, you know, I'm new. Well, when you're knocking on doors, you don't feel new anymore. You might have, you might not have done as many deals or transactions as some other agents, but you will know almost as much as anybody else or more. So that was a long rant. I can't remember how you got me started. 
uh, well, no, that's good. So I really, and I want to get to, uh, you're talking a lot about your experience and what you've learned, but I want to get to the beginning when you went out and started knocking on doors, you said, I could have quit the first day. And, and, and it probably a lot of people would have supported you in that decision. But first, somebody must have told you, because I remember my uncle dropping me and my cousin off in the neighborhood as if we were all going to get out and door knock. And he said, get out right here. I'll go park. Well, he drove away. That was his plan the whole time. So that, you know, one of the reasons I was so excited about having you on is because I can remember getting dropped off and he goes, whoever gets the most leads, I'll buy you a hamburger later. You know, like we were young enough to where a hamburger made a difference. Right. Like now, right now, if you told me you're going to buy me a hamburger, if I did some, I'm like, I can buy a little freaking hamburger. I don't need you. Right. So, but so think about back then and what could we learn about your willingness to just keep doing it right there? What, what were you saying when you knocked on the door, keeping in mind that, yeah, you were doing geographic farming. I loved something that you just dropped in there that it was just 11 to two every day. And how many people call me after I've done a class on, door knocking saying, well, well, what exact time should I go when you go? That's exactly that's the, right? answer. the like, time you will consistently and, go is the time. And we go. overthink it too much. And you just went out 11 to two. You didn't think about who was home and who wasn't. You just went out. So talk to us a little more about that, if you would. Sure. So, uh, and, but, but just to go back to answer the first part of the, your question, which was, and I, I, I quickly alluded to it earlier. I, and I also talk about this in the book. I, I don't want to get too deep into whys. You know, there's all yeah. kinds of, you know, you should have this big why, but you got to be, you got to be clear. Are you, are you staying in real estate or not staying in real estate? I was staying. I wasn't quitting. So that was the first decision. I wasn't going to quit and go do something else. And therefore I had to make it work. There was no other option for me. So the fact that I sucked the first day, the first week, the first year, first three, four, five years, um, you know, I just wasn't going to go do anything else. So that was that was the first part. I just, you know, I just was clear I was not going to go do anything else. I was going to make it work. And then, but getting to your question about, um, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I just blanked out. What did you ask me? That was the well, like thing? talk about like when you first went out. You said you failed, but you just kept going. Did you start changing what you were saying? Did you uh, change your approach? Did you get some coaching? Did someone say no? Do more of this or do less of that? Like that's the that's the part that would allow people here to see them themselves clear of okay, I'm going to go fail forward and do this door knocking thing. Yeah, you also said something else. It'll come to me. You asked me another question. Um, Yes, I got coaching. I think the thing that made the biggest difference for me is when you can become unattached to the results and you're okay with whatever happens, then you can just be at the door for people. And that means you're listening and you're available and it doesn't matter what they say. And that is That's an evolution. Beautiful. That's like beautiful. That, it's beautiful. That yeah. was an evolution. That just took time, a long time, but it took time. I did learn early on what I created for myself um, was that because the odds are low that people are moving, Here's the other thing that's true. When I go to knock on someone's door, two things are very evident. Number one, I am trespassing. <laughs> I'm trespassing <laughs> on their property. And two, I'm uninvited, right? They're not expecting me. They're busy doing something else, even if something else is sitting on the couch watching TV. And so when I got to the door, I realized in year two, I had three intentions at the door and it was my intentions that stayed with me ever since. So the first intention was to leave people better off than I found them. Not like I'm some real estate messiah, you know, or any of that, but you know, it could be just to, you know, leave people with a, Hey, have a great day and a smile. Right. So wishing, you know, smiling at people, wishing them a great day. 
Two, uh, I do have an intention to do business today, not three years from now. So if someone says, oh yeah, we're moving as soon as our youngest graduates. And I say, great, you know, how old are they? And they say, oh, they're just going into junior high. All right, <laughs> good for you. All right, I don't, I don't need to put them in my database. That's too far away. And then the third thing is, how do I be of service? How do I be of service? And being of service really is as simple as, you know, someone's complaining about their sprinkler head just broke. Oh, would it be, you know, would you mind if I gave you, you know, my sprinkler guy? Or oh, we're thinking of doing some painting this year. Oh, you know, would you like me to recommend a painter? You know, simple things like that go a long way. I've helped people get jobs. I've connected people into friendships. I've connected people into quilting clubs, right? When you meet all these people, you sort of build a huge network and uh, it's not that hard to connect people. Um, and sometimes people just need to be heard. Sometimes people are, you know, we're all dealing with stuff and believe it or not, this is a true story. This just happened two months ago. This woman uh, called me and she's, Stephen, I have to call you. I'm, I'm finally moving. I'm just going to sell my house to a builder. I wanted to call and tell you. Um, and, uh, and the reason she wanted, I'll just, the short version of the story is she wanted to tell me, she said, because when I first met you 10, 11 years ago, my husband had recently died. I was in a very dark spot and you were just a bright light that would come to my door every, you know, every now and then. And I can't thank you enough, right, for being such a contribution to me during those times. I'm a friggin' real estate agent. All I was doing was going door to door and just being of service for people. Yeah. Now, yes, some of you are thinking, uh, I have bills to pay. That's great. But like, I still need to make some sales. Um, but I think the point here for me was if if I'm committed to building trusted relationships with people, I don't have to get too caught up in how do I get someone to buy or sell with me today? What worked for me is how do I connect with people and create a relationship so that they feel trusted in either referring me or using me when the time comes. And I'm not saying that's the right view. That's just the view I took and it worked for me because what ends up happening is then you get clients who are awesome. I don't have shitty clients. I have really great clients who are easy and collaborative and pay me my full fee and they don't argue. And so my life gets really, really easy. Go to the doors, go on some appointments. That's it. <laughs> That's all there is to do. Now, granted, this is my 18th year, so I have some years behind me in experience, uh, but I don't have a lot to do. That's awesome. So um, I'm not sure what question I asked you. I, I, I am going to open it up to some questions, but not right away because I want to hear a little bit more about the story, the journey from when, when was it about like, what year would you say you started to realize, Hey, I'm pretty good at this. Like, cause obviously you, you weren't, you weren't patting yourself on the back. You were more, you had the three intentions, which I typed into the chat. Those are brilliant, Stephen. Thank you for those. Uh, and I think if we all keep those in mind, uh, you know, leave people better than I found them to do business today. Uh, yes. Um, and Sherry Mason put in the people don't care how much you know till they know how much you care. And I love that quote. And I think, yes, the fact that, um, you know, that you were, you were being honest about, I want to do business today. Um, I remember hearing that from Mike Ferry, right? Yeah. Uh, that when, when I was listening to Mike Ferry talk back in the, I'm talking about in the 80s now, um, he would say, you're looking for someone who's ready to list with you today. And a lot of times today now, when you go door knocking, I have a piece of paper and yes, I'll write down the address and the note as I walk away from the door that this guy said when his kids graduate, he wants to move. And that's eight years from now. You know, I'll make a note. I'll put them on my my list because I have a lot more technology to help with that now than I did back in the 80s. Um, however, yes, I think it's very important that you say that. And um, I've had on my door knocking venture, Stephen, I actually had a neighbor, uh, somebody when I knocked on their door, stick their head out and look left and right and say, 
did you talk to my neighbor last night? Like, did someone tell you to come to my door today? And I loved it because when you said the odds of them needing to sell on the day you showed up at the door are very, very low. And yet, guess what? It happened, right? Um, A buddy of mine uh, who was also an avid door knocker used to say, you don't have to be good. You just have to be there. Yeah. So, yeah. So uh, tell us a little bit about the transition from getting better and better and better to the point where you go, gosh, I'm really getting really good at this and it's becoming a lot easier. Um, but you didn't stop doing it. That's the big thing, right? I tell people all the time about the stories. I was doing this and it was working great. So I stopped. <laughs> you never stopped. So talk I, about some I, of that. I, I mean, I, I'm not doing it today because I'm spending a lot more, you know, I've shifting my energy to doing more coaching and uh, not really coaching, but training and speaking and right. writing because I can help more people. Uh, but I have a huge database of, so I mean, I actually have a different challenge now, right? Because I have all these people that I know that I used to just see at their doors and I still stay in touch with them. So it's actually harder. It would have been a lot easier just to stay in real estate because I'd still be knocking. I wouldn't be doing anything different. Yeah. But the, um, I mean, I always said, as long as real estate is my primary activity, I was going to knock on doors because- It was the simplest way to run my business. It's the simplest way to run my day. And, you know, in terms of when did I, you know, when I was getting ready to knock on my 100,000th door, which was probably year 12, uh, I felt, I felt like I had accomplished something. I know it's kind of silly. You know, what difference whether you knocked on 50,000 doors or 20,000 doors. But what I found for me was when I would do any type of training classes or do any type of speaking events, the more seasoned agents or the agents who were doing, you know, 50 million or 100 million or a couple hundred transactions, they wanted to hear from me. And what they wanted to hear is how the hell, how the heck, do you get yourself to do that activity day in, day out? And how do you get people to talk to you? And how do you get people to trust you? And that's when I started to realize, right, that I have, you know, some skills that I've developed over time that are valuable, not just at the doors, they work everywhere. Um, so I would say, like most human beings, right, I'm just as flawed and critical and doubtful and imposter syndrome and all the stuff that most of us all deal with. Mm -hmm. So I've always dealt with it just like everything else. And so I I, I never felt like I arrived, if that makes any sense. Makes a lot of sense. And thank you for that bit of vulnerability, because that speaks volumes to me, and I'm sure to others here that, this isn't a science. It's an activity. You just do the activity over and over and over again, and you become the person you needed to be to make it work. And that's what it sounds like with you is you just kept going at it. And uh, the conversations, uh, I mean, who you don't even have to be a real estate agent to have a conversation with someone and they ask you, or they say to you, hey, I'm thinking of painting my house, who do you know? They don't just ask that question of a realtor, but when they do have a realtor, they're thinking, you must know a few people. You've probably helped a few people get their houses painted. So um, it's just being a regular human being. And I I think that's such a big deal that you're saying it like that. And uh, by the way, I do admire that you've said, okay, I'm stepping away and I'm doing a little more coaching and training and helping people to see that this is easy to do and they can make a difference in your business. Yeah, I'll t- I got to tell one quick story. It's not in the yeah. book. All the, by the way, the the three intentions and how I came up with them are in the book, and you know, so I, I go into that a little bit more. But I was, uh, this is, I'm gonna tell the story, and the reason I'm telling the story is because um, it shows how much fun you can have. It shows that right, the universe, life gives you all sorts of great surprises. And you can find joy pretty much in anything. So one day, this was like in 2015, I was still married to to my wife. I'm remarried now, but to my first wife. And uh, 
I remember knocking on this door and um, I'd met her once before. So it's like February. It was kind of a warmer February day here in Colorado. And uh, Thelma, she's like, you know, four feet tall, thick Puerto Rican accent, but with a New York accent. And I said, hi, Thelma, remember it's me, Stephen. And she's like, yes, come in. She was not inviting me. She was not asking me. She was commanding me <laughs> to come <laughs> into her house. <laughs> and I don't normally ever go in the house. I mean, someone's got to be like moving today. Like they, I mean, I just, it, for a lot of reasons, I just don't go in the house. Not just safety. It's just, it messes my flow. It, but like there was something different. So I said, okay. And I remember, and this is in the time of my life. I was, you know, beginning, I was, I'd been in Toastmasters for many years and I knew kind of that I'm like, ah, you know, something beyond just selling real estate. I don't quite know what it is yet. And I remember we're sitting there and she was like a medium. Like she was telling me stuff about my life that, you know, I never said. And then finally she goes, she's like, she just waves her hand at, she's like this real estate stuff. She says, I see you on a stage in front of hundreds of people helping them. This is, I didn't say a word. Is, this is the I little never Puerto Rican. Said this. this is the little Puerto Rican lady. It's right? a little Puerto Rican, Thelma. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so, you know, th that was, you know, just one step on my journey. But like the people you meet is just, it's awesome. It's so yeah. much fun. Yeah. That's amazing. So, um, so 11 to two, uh, people are going to ask this and I want to know on, you know, because like in Fremont, California, where I'm from 11 to two, I'm going to maybe get to 65 doors. What were you getting to a number of doors, maybe in a three hour process? I mean, it depended on the neighborhood. It depended yeah. on Lot um, size, things like that. Right? Yeah. But on average, over the years, I could reliably do you know, 27 to 40 homes an hour, depending okay. on the neighborhood. And the last few years I was knocking, the numbers were a little skewed because what I, what I've, for a number of reasons, I changed my approach and how I, I did a lot of work. I've done a lot of work with Chris Voss and emotional intelligence. And so I've, I shifted kind of what I was doing at the door because after knocking on many of these people's doors for many, 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 many years, I realized there's some people I just don't need to knock on their door anymore, right? So if I've met Rick and Rick, um, you know, Rick's brother's a real estate agent and Rick's a nice guy, but his brother's a real estate agent and he's, you know, very quick and short, at the, you know, he's nice, pleasant, but like, I don't need to stop at Rick's door because on my screen is Caitlin. So I'm just going to use Caitlin, but Caitlin is, you know, We've created this connection. She's when she opens the door, she's like, "Hey, Stephen, how's it going?" Right? She's beating me to the greeting. I want to make sure I talk to Caitlin. Caitlin, getting to Caitlin two or three times a year is more important than getting to Rick. And so, what I found is that I don't need to spend time with people who are just not going to be my people. And again, over time, I you get to learn, you get a sense of, you know, not who you hope to have in your database. But who really should be in your database? Who's really your people? And so if if these people aren't my people, I don't really need to knock on their door anymore. But I, you know, at that point, I didn't need that experience to knock on one more door. I needed to connect to Caitlin. And let's say, uh, you know, Patrice just bought the house next to Caitlin. So I haven't met Patrice. Just because she moved in doesn't mean she won't move a year from now or have family that's coming to town. So I want to meet Patrice. I want to see if... She's someone I should know. So, right, it evolves over time. So the people in the chat who are working a farm, you know, in the beginning, you just want to meet everyone a couple of times. And then you'll start to figure out, well, I, I don't need to talk to Rick anymore or Tom or whoever. Nice. Um, I really like that last bit of advice because um, I used to say, Steve, even when I talked about it, I'd say you're looking for Gladys Kravitz from the TV show Bewitched. You know, she was the nosy neighbor that knew everything about everybody. <laughs> and Gladys would always keep you the longest at the front door when you got one. But I said she was always worth I'd always bring Gladys gifts when I came back because she was always telling me who was getting a divorce, who was 
who was moving, who had a fight in the neighborhood, who didn't like who. Um, and yeah, I definitely, and, and that, that you just taught me another lesson, you know, about skipping the doors that you already know that, you know, they're never going to refer you any business or do business with you, but they like seeing you because they just like talking to people. Right. So, yeah. Sometimes, and sometimes they're just polite, like, you know, they're just polite, but yeah. they, they're never calling. Yeah. They're just never calling. <laughs> yeah. Good. And then, so, um, and then did you sort of just grow your farm? Meaning you started maybe doing two or 300 homes, ended up doing thousands. Is that what you did or uh, geographically? Or did you? I, just... I mean, I won't speak to what I did in California because that was yeah. so long ago. And right. I'll, you know, I had a big geographic firm there. But when I got to Colorado, the market was terrible and I didn't know the market. So I basically started in. If you don't know Colorado, this won't make any sense. But you know, I started in D Douglas County in Parker. I moved across to Castle Rock, north into Castle Pines and Highlands Ranch, and then went all the way through Centennial and Denver, all the way up to downtown. So the geographic areas I had knocked were massive. It was massive, and basically, I was just going. This is you know, in 09, 10, 11, a lot of foreclosures. I befriended some REO agents and I'd say, you know, hey, you know, uh, you know, Lorena, you know, I know you've got a bunch of stuff coming, you know, what, you know, what's hot, you know, what's a great property have? And she'll say, oh, I've got one in Inglewood that's, you know, blah, 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 blah. All right. Well, you know, where's that buyer going to come from? Then I'd go knock a neighborhood or around that house and try and find a buyer. So that took me everywhere, which was great because it got me, I got to know. I mean, my current wife is a native. I know, and she's pretty good geographically. I've been, I mean, we were driving to a graduation party the other day and she said, she's like, God, if you dropped me here, I would have no, idea. without GPS, I, I don't know where I am. I'm like, I think I've been here before. In fact, as we're driving, like I've shown a house right over here. <laughs> like, you know, because I picked up clients from everywhere, right? In the beginning, when you, you know, when the market was bad, I just, so I've learned a lot. Yeah. And uh, then over time, I just worked um, some geographic neighborhoods and there were about uh, six or 7,000 homes in those total geographic neighborhoods all combined. They weren't all next to each other. They're in a couple of different spots. And then, you know, I would knock on anywhere from 4,500 to 5,000 of those every year, you know, a couple of times, because, you know, you know, some neighborhood, you know, one, you know, the house is for sale or the, you know, you've meant it, you've met them. It's a renter. It's always a terrible renter. You know, the house is run down, you know, again, not my client. So, I mean, there was plenty of homes I've skipped, but there was probably for many years, four to 5,000 homes. I consistently knocked on, you know, two yeah. or three times a year. I didn't mail to everyone. I only mailed to the people who I connected with. So I didn't have I didn't have to invest a lot of money in people I didn't know. Now I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. If you have the money and you want to do that, great. For me, that didn't make sense. I wasn't willing to spend money on people I didn't know. And also remember, I'm antisocial. So I don't want to do any of the other stuff. I don't want to do the neighborhood garage sales. I don't want to go to the school. I don't want to volunteer. I don't, I'm not going to go show up and do any of that stuff. There's plenty of people who love to do that stuff. When you combine it with door knocking, it's great, right? It's like a superpower. That's just not me. I just don't want to do that. Yeah. Thank you. I didn't know if you were going to continue from that point, but but yeah. yeah no, I mean, I could, but I mean, I, yeah, I, I do. We're, I do want to bring 1045. I want to make sure people get quit, you know, can ask questions yeah. and whatever else you want to address. But I, I do want to bring up something though. And that was that you look, you door knock looking for buyers for a home. And I, I was, I remember being taught that, that if you had a, a, a small single family home, maybe you knocked on condos or townhomes to see if they wanted to move up to that or something like that. Talk a little bit about that. And then I will spend the last few minutes asking for questions. So, uh, yeah, I How mean, did you go about looking for a buyer 
because I th it's an art what you're doing. Um, I definitely had an uncle who pushed me to do that a lot um, because he had had success doing that in the late 60s, early 70s. And I did find success in it, finding those renters that were ready to buy, you know, things like that, or a homeowner in a condo or a townhome that needed to move up to a smaller single family home or something. So go ahead, elaborate a little bit. On I mean, I have many stories. Um, the two best stories I have is I had this listing and I'm like, ah, where's this buyer going to come from? I'm like, oh, it might come from this neighborhood over here. You know, these are the reasons why. I knocked in that neighborhood, was inviting people to the open house. I know I don't do a lot of open house, but in this case, I was going to do this one and use this listing as leverage. Um, and I met this guy comes to the door. He's on the phone. Um, so he can't really talk. Uh, but I give him the open house flyer. He and his wife come in the open house. This was like 2011. And he's a business guy, sales guy. He couldn't believe I was selling my own listing. I was actually working. And he became a client, bought and sold property. I sold his son a house. I sold his parents' house. I sold his other son a house. His son has referred me to multiple people, right? One door, it's like 11 transactions. And they're great clients, right? I stay in touch with them. We go to baseball games. Um, and then the other one uh, in like, when the market was bad, like maybe 2010, it was one of these REOs, this great, terrible house, great piece of property. Like, oh, who would buy this? Uh, maybe someone from this neighborhood would be moving up for more space. So I go, I meet meet these people. Um, long story short, they uh, they they actually go to put an offer on this house, and they decide it's just too much work. Um, but I've now have them now as a buyer client. They ended up buying this. Um, two million dollar listing that was off market. Uh, this was like in 2011, or I don't remember. It was a long time ago, and you know, two million dollars was a lot of money still back then. <laughs> uh, and so it was like you know, two million dollar buyer I picked up at the doors um, by just paying attention. And you know, I am not a hard sale. You know, I'm not trying to force anything. It was a natural connection, all right? Where would this buyer come from? And um, and they sensed that, right? So they knew I wasn't trying to sell them anything um, and that I would help them. That's awesome. Um, I, I do have a curiosity question. When you knock on a door looking for a listing versus knocking on a door when you're looking for a buyer, can you talk a little bit about the difference of the approach or do you pretty much start the same way? It's always the same way. I mean. It's hard to ask someone. I mean, I don't ask someone if they're thinking of selling their house. I've found if you want to find someone who's thinking of selling their house, have a real buyer need. Yeah. So if I knock on your house, Rick, and I say, hey, hi, I'm Stephen. I'm a local realtor. Probably not thinking of selling. Probably don't care much about what's happening in the real estate market. Uh, and you're probably wondering why I'm here today. And the reason is I have a buyer who's looking to buy a house in the neighborhood. And I was wondering, who do you know in the neighborhood who might be open to selling their house to this buyer? Wow. I found myself uh, leaning in as you said that myself, and I'm a realtor. So very, very nice. Yeah. And, and just as a tie-in, <laughs> because I'm on this topic, uh, people always ask, well, what do you go to the door with? I mean, I had stuff, but it's totally, you don't need anything. In this case, I remember going to the door. I had a real buyer need. I get to the door. It's like fifth door in. And that's talking Rick. And, and so you lean in. You're like, ah, I, I know somebody. Give me your card. And I, I go to my pocket. I was like, shit, I forgot my card. <laughs> Give me your number. <laughs> I don't have any cards. Like, And I didn't even go back to my car to get cards. It's like, ah, I don't need cards. I just, I'm going to go. And the point there is, right, when you're clear what you're doing, who you are, how you run your business, you don't need anything. You just need you. Dude, that's the best thing ever. All right. That was great. So uh, we got 12 minutes, um, really about 11, because I've got to get on to another Zoom. But uh, let's anybody got some questions and it's i'd rather hear the questions than see them in the chat so if you want to unmute and ask a question of steven if you do want to put it in the chat that's fine i just prefer to hear your voices 
I did just want to say thank you. It was great. I got a lot of notes and learned a lot. So thanks. You're welcome. Yeah, you have a lot of doors in Palmdale to knock on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I will be uh, applying this, definitely. <laughs> hey, Steve, I got a question. Go ahead, Tom. Forgive me. I didn't mean to interrupt somebody. Steve, love you, buddy. This has been so good. I, there's so much that I knew about your story but didn't know just listening to you talk and, and hearing what you did. Super inspired to get back out there and knock on some doors. But one of the myths I've always had is like, uh, that I need to come with value. Like I need to be promoting something like here's an open house or here's a just sold or whatever, or here's a market update, whatever. And you just kind of crushed it just now when you said, uh, you know, you don't need anything. You're really just there to connect. And I think that's a real difference. Correct me if I'm wrong, that one is coming to get, okay, what are you ready to sell or ready to buy? No, no one else who is versus, Hey, do you have any real estate needs? How you doing? Um, are, do you ask that question when you're at the doors or do you just, you come with nothing but a your business card or a notepad or nothing at all. Nothing. I mean, look, let's be nothing even I mean, to give them. I mean, at if all? you're if you're promoting uh, an open house, you probably should have an open house flyer. If you do want to work a neighborhood, you probably it probably helps to have a very simple, easy, quick, and dirty market update that you can print in two minutes. You know, so it's not that those things aren't helpful. They're just not required. Um and uh you know, the, when I'm talking to people, I'm just listening for what's happening. And if it's someone I don't meet, you know, the way I find out if they're moving or not is, so if I knock on Rick's door or I knock on your door, Tom, and you say, and I say, you know, I do same intro I did with Rick earlier. And I say, well, you know, great. How, you know, just curious how long you've been here. And you say, oh, I've been here eight years. Great. So eight years. Cool. Hey, where'd you move from? Oh, I moved from uh, La Jolla. Oh, awesome. La Jolla. How'd you, you know, how'd you pick Santa Monica? Well, you know, great. So sounds like things are awesome here. Um, you're probably never moving. You'll probably be here at least another, uh, you know, 22 years, make it an even 30. And then they say, one of you know, so I always pick a long, long time frame, and people usually say one of two things Yep, never moving, great, <laughs> or hell no, I'm not staying here. To, you know, I got three more years till my wife retires, or my husband retires, or until you know, whatever. And then you don't have to ask them, <laughs> When do you plan on moving? They tell you it's even better. I love it. That's so it's. It's frighteningly, frighteningly simple. And you, in, on the first page of the first chapter, there's a little quote in uh, uh, that writing on the side. What do they call that kind of writing? Italic. It says, what's missing most of the time for us is right action applied consistently over time. I love that. So, um, who, Betty, did you have a question? Yeah, yeah. So, um, jump in. Stephen, it's a, a pleasure to have you on the call today. And uh, as soon as I saw Rick put the email out, I bought your book. And oh, uh, I've been a coach. I've been I was coaching with Steve Scholl for many yes. years, and I remember I remembered, your name. I remembered your name, but I never had the face to go with the name. And I, I he didn't seem to pick on you very much because I know he would pick on everybody else. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> He picks on me on the side. Oh. Most people don't hear. <laughs> okay. And then I'm also going to a Ninja Selling installation in September. And I'm, I'm really excited to do that. I, I read his book. And, and so with the two, the two thoughts combined, I think is a phenomenal approach to, to real estate. Um, and one more thing. I, um, I like people, but I love being alone as well so i have like a good balance i was an appraiser uh, before being in real estate and um i'm i'm so happy to hear from you that that you don't have to be on social media and 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 have the parties and all these things that i don't do um that i think don't do very well i'm, I'm not real real into being on social media and trying to capture everybody on Facebook ads and all of that stuff. And 
and it's just great. Um, and one more thing, I did move to uh, Santa Barbara right around 2010, and I didn't know anyone there. And I started door knocking and the agents there, I was in the Coldwell Banker in Montecito and the agents there didn't door knock. Mm -mm. And uh, when they found out I got a two and a half million dollar listing from door knocking, <laughs> some of them actually started door knocking. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it, door knocking, I have to go back to it because I'm, I am actually really good at it. I'm, I connect very well with people and I've had a lot of success. So Thank you for, for pushing us to go outside of our comfort zone. You're welcome. It's great to hear your voice and thanks for that. And, you know, I know Larry. Larry's here in Colorado. Um, Larry read my book, wrote a very nice testimonial. Yes. Um, I'm having lunch with Larry later this month or might get pushed to early September. And I used to... Uh, um, you know, Larry will never, you know, Ninja Selling does not talk about knocking on doors. But what I did at the doors, as Larry would say, is very ninja-like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you stay in flow with the right people, you know, the people who are your people. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so Ninja Selling is by Larry Kendall. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And Larry's obviously famous in the real estate industry to a lot of us who've been around a long time. So, yeah. yeah. Thank um, you. Yeah, Larry Kendall, Ninja Selling. So, yeah. Um, okay, uh, we've got time for maybe one more question. Uh, Lorena, go ahead. I just want to say thank you, Steve, because my personality is very similar like yours. I automatically went, <laughs> it was like, oh, okay, I'm listening because you simplified it and um, you made me feel like, okay, I can just go and be myself. I'm not a pushy agent as well, and I attract awesome people too. My uh, lenders are always saying, you have the nicest clients because I I am not pushy and I get that kind of people that like that treatment. So I thank you so much because you simplified it. I we We're going to have a Roma's day in my town and I'm going to be going out and giving out flyers. So I was going to use that approach to get me into it. And so thank you. It was the perfect thing for me right now. So thank you for that. Awesome. Great. You're welcome. All right. Any other questions before we let Steve go back to his day? Because it's almost lunchtime in Colorado. So uh, Stephen, I cannot thank you enough. This has been so good for my soul. It's been educational to me. At 42 years plus in the business, I'm always open to learning. And what you've taught me is so simple to execute. And I appreciate it more than words can say. I'm sure our paths are going to cross uh, more and more. Uh, guys, thank you all for jumping on. We're, I'm sure everybody's going to be anxious to receive the recording of this and share it with friends. And Stephen, I'm sure you're going to get lots of communication going forward. Um, I imagine they can go to doorsopenwhenyouknock.com. They can and reach out to you that way if yep. they want, right? Please, okay, yep. Cool. That, that's the easiest way to get a hold of me if you just want to get a copy of the book. Just um, go to Amazon. <laughs> it's on Amazon, Kindle, or the audio should be up within the next several weeks. Um, and are you speaking the audio? Yeah, I, I record the audio nice. myself. Yeah. And is there any side stuff or is it just the book? Do you talk other things besides the actual chapters? Or uh, I mean, there's a little bit in there. I, I wanted, I did a little riffing. Um, I have a, one of my friends is a videographer and he did it for me. I'm like, all right. So he was like, all right, you got to keep it to audible standards. But he's like, if you want to, you know, riff a little, we can do that. So yeah, <laughs> that's good. All right. Well, great to have you. You're a wonderful human being and we very much appreciate you uh, uh, joining us today. I tell everybody there's no recruiting and no selling on this call except the guest speakers. They get to sell. So please, everybody, push Stephen's book. And if you need him to come and speak at an event, I'm sure he'd be happy to do that for you. Yeah, please. Yes. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Nice to My meet pleasure. all of you. Hope to see you again sometime soon. Okay, guys. Two weeks from today, third, third Friday, we'll be back. See you then. Thank Bye, you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.